coming together of enemies to form a company. For example, sodium here reacted with chlorine to form sodium chloride. Now, the sodium and the chlorine are the reactants, while the sodium chloride is the product. Now, this law of chemical combination describes the basic principles obeyed by each of these atoms during the combination. Now, the laws I have for here, the first one, that is the law of conservation of matter, is also referred to as the law of conservation of mass. And that states that mass, matter can neither be created nor destroyed, or can be changed from one form to another. We have law of definite proportion. That is also the same as law of constant composition. We have law of multiple proportion, and we have law of reciprocal proportion. Now this morning we'll be looking specifically at the law of multiple proportion. And that said that if two elements combine to form more than one compound, for example, let's say your carbon is reacting with oxygen, I can have carbon two oxide, I can have carbon four oxide. So that the two elements now can give me more than a compound. Now, the various masses of one element, which combine separately with another, will be in a multiple proportion. Now, let's look at a worked example. Now, copper reacts with oxygen to form two oxides, X and Y. On an analysis, 1.535 grams of X yielded 1.365 grams of copper, and 1.45 grams of Y yielded 1.160 grams of copper. Now the first question, we have to determine the chemical formula of X and Y. So let's look at that. For X, the mass of, of the oxide, we are told is 1.535. Remember, your oxide, that means for copper oxide, and that means combination of copper and oxygen. Now, we have the mass of the oxide, and we're given the mass of copper from the question to be 1.365 grams. Now, what comes to mind? How do you get your mass of oxygen? You deduct this from this. So, your mass of oxygen is going to be this minus this, and that's going to give you 0 0.17 grams. So, knowing the various masses now, we proceed, and the method we are going to use is what we've been using to determine empirical molecular formula. So, leave the element present. I have copper, I have oxygen. The various masses. The mass of copper is 1.365, and the mass of oxygen from my calculation here is 0 0.170. The next thing, you have to divide each with the relative atomic mass. The relative atomic mass of copper is 3.5, and the relative atomic mass of oxygen is 0 0.16. Now, dividing that, you're going to have 0 0.21 here, you're going to have 0 0.011 there. The next thing, you pick the least value, which is 0 0.011. You divide both by the least value. So, that's all you have here. After dividing, you're going to have two here, you're going to have one here. So writing that out, your copper, then you put it to your oxygen, one, of course, you know you can't put the one. So this is the first chemical formula. This is for X. Let's look at Y. For Y, the mass of the oxide from the question, 1.45, mass of copper is 1.160. So how do you get your mass of oxygen? You deduct this from this, and you're going to have 0 0.29 grams. So the same step, you leave the element present, copper, oxygen, the mass of copper from the question, 1.160, and the mass of oxygen from the question, 0 0.29. Again, you divide by the relative atomic mass. For copper, it's 3.5. For oxygen, it's 16. After dividing, you have 0 0.018 and the same value for oxygen. Now you look at the least value, which is still 0 0.018. You divide each by the least value. Then you're going to get one and one as a result. So you combine and you write your equation. See you, there is one, of course, you can't put one. Then you put your oxygen, of course, you can't put one too. So that's all this. We've gotten the chemical formula for both X and Y. So the next question. We have to calculate the mass of copper, which can react with zero, with 0 0.5 grams of oxygen to yield X and Y. In oxide X, from our question, we know that 0 0.17 grams of oxygen reacted with
with 1.365 grams of copper. So you bring your 0 0.5 grams of oxygen here, then you make this the unknown. You cross multiply, make K the subject of the formula. After doing that, you have this to be 4.0 grams. Doing the same for oxide Y. This is the gram of oxygen from our previous calculation. Reacting with 1.16 grams of copper. Now you bring this here and you make this the unknown. Let's make this I. Now making the I the subject of the formula you cross multiply, then you're going to have this value. Now our value now from this calculation, you can see we have multiple ratio. So that leading us to the next question. Which law of chemical combination is illustrated? So from our calculation, we can conclude that the law of multiple proportion is illustrated with this question. So join me in the Google class for further discussion.